So here we are gonna repair this surfboard. It's in two pieces right now. Let's take a flat blade. And of course, clean all the wax off. I'm gonna clean probably back here because the fiberglass is gonna come. And so cleaning all the wax off with the blade. This is so that the fiberglass can stick because um, if there's any wax on the surface of the board and you're sanding it and you've got wax on the surface, the fiberglass won't stick. So take the wax off first. And the next thing we're doing is we're checking to see where we need to remove the glass because um, the glass is inside of the brake. So we're gonna use the Dremel and remove some glass that's inside because we need to align the rocker. So now I'm taking the Dremel, being very careful to cut only along the line where the glass is dipping into the brake. And you saw where I stopped on the edge there. So where the glass is dipping down because of the way that the board broke, the, the foam was crushed and the fiberglass went down into the board. Here I am removing those pieces. I'm gonna leave this because I'm gonna still try and connect the rails. This has to go, the whole thing. Removing the loose piece of fiberglass there and now standing the board up to see how the, to see how the two pieces settle in against each other. The exact and it's looking like they're settling place. pretty good. However, there's a good so amount of space on the bottom. We, we know that there's a big gap. Stringer, it's good to keep that there because it keeps it from going like this. Here, I'm taking off the dust and loose fiberglass. And the reason we do that is so that there's no pieces. There's no pieces hanging. There's no loose pieces. So. What I'm doing now is building the paste. The paste is essentially we're using resin as glue and we're using resin, cabocel, I mean uh, resin, we're using resin, Q-cell, cut up pieces of fiberglass. And the reason we're using the cut up pieces of fiberglass is because it it gives it like flex. It's essentially like using um, it's essentially like using rebar in concrete when you cut up fiberglass and put it inside the mix and it gives it flex and keeps it, uh, it keeps it strong still. So with that mix, we add our catalyst and then we start putting it on not one, but we put it on both sides of the board so that we can make sure to fill in all of the dips. And as you can see here, I'm just pushing it into the corners. Taking the other side, same thing, pushing it into the corners, especially because that's where the rail is. We're going to read the rails are the rails are the most important part of the board, I feel. And here we are aligning it. If a little bit of resin squeezes out, that's a good thing. However, when I check the bottom, there's still a gap here. So I didn't I actually needed more resin because the foam was compressed so much on the brake that it left us space. So here I am making some more of that same mixture and taping one side so that uh, the resin doesn't squeeze through. Also taping the rails. We got this defined, we got this gap that we know we gotta fill. And there's the gap left by the compressed foam. I dremeled out a little bit of uh, fiberglass that was still in the hole. And here I am leveling out more of the resin paste. Even though it was only d lambed on the top there, I also put resin paste there because I wanted to, I wanna level it out with the whole area after it hardens. So here I'm using tape to hold the resin, even though the, the resin will hold, I'm using tape on both sides to essentially give myself some rigidity so that I can do my best to get the rocker line in place. There's a few ways to do this. Some people do it standing up. The only thing that you want to get right is to make sure that it's 
in the same spot after it hardens. So here's Jimmy O'Brien. He's a local shaper. And by some miracle, he happened to walk in at that exact moment and gave me a tip to put good. something yeah, underneath the board. Yeah. Thank you. And so we just leave that to harden overnight. <laughs> and then the next day, we come in and the reason you want to you want to double check it like you don't want to leave that night you want to stay there for like at least 30 minutes to keep checking to make see if it doesn't move because the next day once it hardens that's it your line is your rocker line is set and so what we're doing now is marking out where we're going to sand and this is important right here i'm marking out the pattern for the sanding because you want to have a bulging pattern to sand because the board still wants to flex and you also want to reinforce the rails because the rails will keep the board give the board a parabolic strength you know you, you want it to be strong paper. on the outsides i'm using a 60 grit paper it's the hardest i mean it's uh it's a really rough paper so it would allow us to sand when we sand you don't need to sand through all of the cloth you want to sand to the point where the you start to see the squares of the cloth and that'll ensure that the fiberglass makes a nice bonding. Here I am hand sanding the rails because with the machine, you can, you can do so much, but a hand sanding on the rails will make it very smooth. Here I am cutting the cloth down to the to the shapes that, that I drew. You don't gotta be perfect because it's only gonna stick to the sanded area. This out here, smooth underneath, that, that's not gonna stick anywhere. And for for this for this board i use six two layers of six ounce cloth on both sides now this board is a step up board and that means it's used for big waves big wave boards you usually want more weight and more strength on the board and they don't need to be as light because they're not necessarily used for doing turns and airs that's why i use two layers of six ounce cloth on both sides and then the rails overlapping them would give them four layers of six ounce cloth on the rails. Pretty much just gonna sand it flat, it's solid. Today I'm using the hard pad because it's gonna, we wanna sand a lot of this down so the hard pad will give us some resistance. There's a difference. So, the soft one, you can fade the edges nicely. This is gonna cut through it really abruptly. So. And the reason I want to use a hard pad is to cut off more. This is these jobs are incredibly physically exhausting because it's a lot of sanding because it's such a large area. Turn my hand over to see how smooth it is. Often when sanding, I use my hands to check the check how level it is with the board. Sometimes you want to sand more. Sometimes you want to stop because you may have created a, a dent. Okay, I'm trying to fade the sanding. The only way to learn how to sand is to physically use a machine for a lot, a long time to understand how much material you're taking. I won't be off. using this hard pad on the rails because if you cut too down too much into the rails, it's not going to be round anymore. I'm using the hard pad on the top and the bottom to try and make it flat. It's, and you can see the square because that's how you know it'll attach those squares. Hand sanding always makes it extra smooth. This is what we're doing so before the hot coat. To the curve I'm using a soft it. pad on the rails to take down a large amount of, ter of material coat. from the rails. We just wrap our rails and then sand them smooth. They're already smooth, but a, but a hand sanding gives it a nice finish. Just wrap the rails like that. And that gets rid of the sharp, any sharp edges here. always want to check the shape of those rails down and then you just rub it and then it feels smooth it's continuous with the board you know you just check out all your surfaces see how they feel and off the bat I could feel over here I need to actually take down a little more with the machine the rails feel good and all right so check it out we're seeing now is finished. after There's some the hot from the resin and we have the lines that we taped off but Solid, ready to go. So we're using them. To sand the hot coat, we want to essentially use a 180 grit paper. And the 180 grit paper is going to allow us to sand the hot coat flush. And it's 
not going to dig into the fiberglass as much. So it'll give us a nice clean finish. I'm just switching out the paper because some wax got some wax from the hot coat got into the, the paper and it's not gonna sand as well with wax in the paper. So after the hot coat, we're, we're focusing on the edges. And then after all the edges are sanded through and we get it to a flat level, I'm using the palm sander with the 320 grit. And what this is doing is really making it extra smooth. So feel how smooth that is. We're progressively going up in the number. This was a 320 dry. So now we're gonna do a 400 wet sand and then a 1500 wet sand to really get that smooth finish. We got the 400 on there, got some water. And the finishing is incredibly intensive. It takes a long time, but it's always worth it because you get an extra smooth, shiny finish, as you can Ooh, see. Look at the I'm just wiping it down, see, getting no ready on for that the rim. next step, which is going to be painting. And that's, and that's what a good sanding job can do. If you know how to sand, you can make this board look brand spanking new. For this board, we're going to need to paint. We need green, black, and we need a primer to prime the board because if we don't use the primer, you're gonna see the the break through the paint. The primer is gonna allow us to make a nice fade. So here I am just taping off all the areas. Now we have to decide whether it's a fade or if it's a hard line that goes straight across. This is the proper way you're supposed to do it. Starting to paint the board, you can see the primer, putting the primer down right now. You know? And it's but it's really all technique at this point to, to get a so nice fade. On. How far are you holding yeah. the can away? You know, That's even nice. long, even passes across the whole board, not, not dropping not droplets. This is way better than what I expected. This is not going to be a hard black line in front of your face while you're paddling. It's going to be a nice fade. You know, this green might be a little lighter, but it'll be a fade. So just putting the primer on this side, we're going to do the same thing. So All right, and then I was just waiting for that to dry. After the paint job is just the tape pull, a satisfying part. And then we are cleaning the wax off. This is just so our customer gets a, a more clean board. Here we are peeling the tape. The green fade is done. As you can see, the paint that I use is, appears slightly brighter than the board. It's actually the same color. However, the green on the board, it, it's aged. It's been, you know, it's been in the sun and it's also underneath the fiberglass. The paint that I'm putting on is on top of the fiberglass. That's why it comes out a little bit brighter. And yeah, there we go. A clean broken board completely in two pieces. And now it's ready to surf and touch the water again. Thanks for watching. My contact info is there if anyone has any questions.